Welcome to this video lecture. We're talking about optimization with Python and SciPy. Uh, we're also going to talk about real-time optimization, which is the focus of this module. So how do you use optimization uh, to account for changing parameters in a changing environment, but so that you can continuously solve this optimization problem to make sure that your system is performing optimally even as conditions change. So in a, a past video lecture when we were talking about application programming interfaces, we talked about, we showed this diagram with the, here's the process. So from your process, you're going to read in uh, values from sensors into your PID control loop. Some of that information may get fed up into supervisory control or a model predictive control. There actually is optimization involved in solving that. Uh, that information can go up further to this concept of uh, real-time optimization. And this, so you might have a, if you're running a chemical plant or a power plant or, um, or some other kind of a system where the market is changing and the environment is changing and even the plant itself is changing, meaning that your optimal solution is changing uh, continuously, this is where uh, that uh, application lives. So you're, you would be incorporating all of these changes in the plant, in the market, in the environment, resolving an optimization problem. Once you get that optimum, you're sending that solution back down to your supervisory control uh, scheme. We're not going to be covering supervisory control or model predictive control in this course, but that is often a layer that you have in there just to have better multivariable control. So this, this your RTO system solves for an optimal solution. And it's going to be pushing that optimal solution down to all these layers. So here, your regulatory control, you're giving this optimal set points and then pushing those optimal set points down to actuators in your actual process. So uh, in module four, when we were talking about application programming interfaces and communication protocols between these various entities, so there is this communication where your plant is pushing that data up to through your control system, uh, a distributed control system of some sort. That can be pushing this data up to uh, computer applications which may run on a server. So here is where that RTO application might live in addition possibly to um, some of these other applications like model predictive control or this planning and scheduling. So you're reading in this sensor data, pushing this uh, data back up into your RTO application, solving for the optimal solution, and then pushing that optimal solution back down to your plant through an API or through a communication protocol, uh, just like an API. Uh, one of the topics, remember, when you're optimizing, you're optimizing based on a model. Uh, in module six, we covered machine learning, and we had these data-driven or machine learning models of, of a plant. Um, but note that models have inaccuracies. We didn't have R-squared values of one in either of those cases, and we had a measurable mean absolute error in some case. So I like this quote from George Box. Um, he says, all models are wrong some are useful. So it's important to remember when you're doing this kind of thing for real-time optimization that you're optimizing based on a model of the plant and your model is going to have inaccuracies. So if we're looking at a hypothetical graph, if we just had a one, a single decision variable optimization problem and we're plotting the value of our objective function, this, so this might be a total cost of our plant based on this one um, variable uh, this would you can definitely uh, take this abstraction into multiple dimensions but it's much harder to plot those so let's say that we optimize based on this model we're trying to minimize our objective function so our solver is going to start somewhere it's going to iterate down until it converges and our optimal solution based on that model is right there so we are going to choose the decision variable that corresponds to the optimum value of our model. We're gonna uh, 
take that decision variable and push it down from our RTO application, ultimately back down through our control system and into the plant. And that's how we're going to run the plant, is based on the optimal solution from our model. So what happens um, is that if this is the optimal solution that we find and push down, this is, how, this is where we're going to operate our plant because that's where our model tells us. But in actuality, uh, if this is the actual value of the objective function, if we had a, a perfect system, we would be finding a value that is not totally optimal. Still good, still much better than our initial solution or our, our initial guess here. So we still have improved um, the optimality of our plant, but we have not found the true optimum, which is here. So just something to remember, you want your model to be as accurate as possible because at the end of the day, you're gonna be picking an optimal solution that has to be close to the optimum in real life. And of course, if we were to able to line up our model and the actual data perfectly, that would be great. And we would, we would then find this optimal solution, which would be the true optimal solution. But we live in reality. We optimize based on imperfect models. And so we're going to sometimes get imperfect solutions. And this is called plant model mismatch. And this can be problematic, not just in your objective function, but also sometimes dealing with your constraints. Where, uh, in module eight, we're gonna do real-time optimization based on a physical model. And in that model, we're gonna be enforcing um, these, we're gonna actually be building our model into the constraints themselves as equality constraints. So just some things to note. All right, so in real-time optimization, you start with the plant, you build, you, you take the sensor data, you feed that data, and you do model fitting based on that data. So your model might be a purely data-driven model from using the tools of machine learning like we did in module six. Um, it also may be a model that you've built, you've, you know the math, you know the, uh, if it's a chemical system, the kinetics, the energy balance, uh, all the different energy consumed by your equipment, um, the profit functions, all of that perfectly. Um, or imperfectly, if it's not perfect, then you you might take certain parameters that you don't know and try and fit that model to the data uh, in that way. So that's called model fitting or model parameterization. So you want to keep your model as up to date as possible. And because the plant is going to change, you might have heat exchangers that foul. You might have pumps that start performing um, imperfectly. You might have valves that get stuck or that uh, degrade over time. All of that can change the behavior of your plant. So you wanna keep updating your model continuously. So this is sort of the first phase is model fitting or model parameterization. And you can actually do this in real time as well so that you're incorporating all the latest changes into your from your plant into the model. Once you've got that model, you send that updated model to your optimization application. You uh, would use this optimization to solve for optimal conditions. But first, you would wanna bring in external or environmental data. So for example, if the product prices or feedstock prices change, you want to incorporate those new prices into your model because those would affect your objective function. So you wanna bring in that new data um, here, then solve for optimal operation based on knowing how the plant has changed and updating your model accordingly and then knowing how the environmental or market uh, conditions have changed. Then you solve for optimal operation and you send that optimal solution down to the actuators in your plant. And this is basically how real-time optimization works. If you stay tuned for the next video, I'm gonna show you how do you parameterize your optimization application so that you're not just solving this fixed problem, but so that you can account, account for some of these changing conditions and automatically update your optimization problem accordingly.